Hello, hello. Hello. Frantically, frantically setting everything up for the things I'm supposed to show off. It's like, oh yeah, should make sure that works. Got to pray to the demo bot at the same time. Brandon, your keyboard's a little loud. Um, I think that's you. Yeah, that's me. And everyone, as you uh, as you file in, please make sure that I've captured your name in the doc. Looks like there's a few people who've joined since the last time I went and made a pass on that. I can never figure out like what goes into the mic anymore. I feel like different apps filter things differently. Yeah, or they use different microphones like yeah like this is apparently using my webcam mic even though i'm pretty sure i told it to use this mic that's right here in front of me let's see can you still hear me okay now that it's using the right mic <laughs> hey guys good afternoon hey marco good morning. Good morning. how are you uh, how are you doing yeah, it's good how are you yeah, yeah, everything is fine. Yeah, yeah. Surviving. <laughs> I guess some folks are at uh, Open Source Summit EU, right? Yeah, I know Mike is. I'm, he's the only person from Kusari, but. Mihai's over there too, right? Yeah, I think Mihai's there. We'll wait about another 10 seconds. We'll get to five after, and then we'll start things for real. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everyone, to the September 2024 Guac Community Meeting. Um, as, as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Guac U YouTube channel. Um, this is an open, SS open SSF meeting subject to the Code of Conduct and the Linux Foundation Antitrust Policy. Um, uh, so with that, we'll get started with um, welcomes. Uh, is there anyone who is here for the first time or the first time in a long time and wants to say hi? Hey, hi, I'll just quickly introduce myself. I am Shreyas. I'm from Guidewire. I'm attending for the first time, but I think we met with Parth on a regular basis, apart from the community meeting. Glad to be here. It's great to have you here. Appreciate you uh, joining for the first time. I hope we'll see you at uh, in the future meeting as well. All right, so the agenda for this month is relatively short. There are a couple of uh, things that I was going to demo, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Hacktoberfest uh, participation proposal. Um, and then there's plenty of time for just any topics that come up. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and share my screen.
if I can find the right one. Yes, there we go. Um, and I'll embiggen this a little bit as, as soon as I remember how to do that in, there we go. In VS Code. Um, so one of the things that I was thinking about and there will be a blog post and probably a, a short YouTube video about this here uh, in the coming days. Uh, is this the fact that like, you know, one of the interesting things that people might want to do with, you know, their supply chain data is contribute to upstream projects that are, you know, in their supply chain, um, particularly, you know, perhaps in the month of October during uh, Hacktoberfest. Um, you know, if somebody wants to earn a t-shirt, which I don't think they're actually giving out this year, but you know, they want to earn whatever prizes are being given away. Um, and so when we have the has source at attribute, uh, and so I thought, well, what if we queried for anything, this is the wrong directory. Um, what if we queried for anything that has, has source at and then, you know, GitHub and GitLab are both participating source co code forges. And they both have ways to search for things that are tagged with Hacktoberfest. So I wrote a script that I call Guactober um, that basically just takes that query and does it. And so we'll see if my environment is properly set up. Go to the right directory. Or in my script. Oh, no, crap. So, um, yeah, demo gods were not appeased. Uh, let's try this again. <sighs> All right, well, um, I won't waste a lot of time trying to debug this because but basically what it will do is uh, just give you a list at the end. It prints out, it's, um, so it grabs the, anything with has source at, looks for, does it come from GitHub or GitLab, and then grabs from those forges um, a list of participating projects. And it just looks like, all right, of things in your Guac database that have an has source at, which ones are in this list of participating projects, prints it out to standard out, and away you go. Um, and so, you know, I thought that would be, you know, it's like, all right, it's a, you know, not something we'd want to necessarily have it by default in Guac, but it's an interesting way to use the data, um, especially with Hacktoberfest coming up. Um, it might be a way for people who are using Guac or thinking about Guac to look at it and get some value. Um, and when I have my, uh, Python modules uh, installed, it um, works pretty well. The other thing that I recently did um, from a conversation that I had overheard was thought about, um, you know, what happens, you know, you, you have projects that declare a license and people might want to use that information um, to you know, say like, all right, make sure we understand like our obligations by pulling this package in. You know, meeting, making sure we're meeting the the license obligations from upstream. But as we all know, sometimes what a project says its license is doesn't quite match all the things it's pulled in. Um, and so again, I wrote a this time all by myself. Uh, wrote a GraphQL query that uses the you know relatively new, um, clearly defined support looks for certify legal and pulls out anything, um, all the discovered licenses and declared licenses for a particular package or source. And then this script um, basically like compares those. So for each package, it looks at the two. If they're not exact matches, it prints it out. And um, I think my guac environment is not fully set up yet because I remembered to start setting up my demo environment like two minutes before the call started. Um, so pardon me real quick. Am 
Um, but again, so like the idea is just, you know, hey, here's a thing that, you know, is a question people might ask. There's a sort of simple demo way to do it. Um, it might be some, this might be something we actually do want to add eventually um, as like an out of the box thing in Guac. But, you know, it's just a way to like, as an example, to give people like, hey, here's the way to get some quick value out of the data you have. Um, and again, I'll be writing a blog post and making a silly little YouTube video on that shortly. Um, let's see. All right. This worked when I demoed it internally last week. So there's clearly something going on between now and then. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this one, go ahead. Sorry, right, quick question. Is is there a plan to add it to the to demo, to the demos also? I think it might be worthwhile just to like to yeah, so that's, show people that uh, can be used and so forth. That's a, that's a good question. Um, right now, this is in a separate repo that I created under my namespace just to have a place to store it. Um, I would certainly be happy to put it in because um, they both both of these. I had to write a little bit of Python scripts to actually do things with the data. Um, so it's kind of a question of, you know, how much of that do we want to have versus just sort of having it as a blog post that people can reference. Um, you know, again, I, I'd be happy to have that. I just wanted to kind of proof of concept it before we try to add it to the demos. So that's definitely something we can consider. Brandon? Yeah, I kind of, I really like this. And, and I think it, it should definitely be somewhere made available through the demo page because I think that's where people are looking. Um, I don't know, maybe we have to classify it somewhat. Maybe it's like, oh, here are community demos so that like, you know, these are not necessarily scripts that, that we want to maintain within the repo. Um, but like if someone um, does something cool with anything and be like, oh, I did this thing, you know, maybe we, we have that community demo and each of them can link out to like the, the blog post that like Ben, you're right. Or like if, if someone else writes a blog post, we can link out to that as well. Yeah. And I was thinking like, um, you know, we have the d directory where the demo data comes from, like that could be, like it could maybe, you know, for things that require scripts, have them have it live alongside there. So yeah, I'd be happy to uh, open pull requests on that and we can discuss the specifics of how to sort of make it more official without being, you know, official, official, you know, sort of like a, like you said, community contributing. Um, so yeah. So that was, that was sort of the two things I wanted to share um, there. And I apologize that the demo doesn't actually work, but the blog posts will be more informative anyway. Um, the other thing that I did verify is working that we can uh, share real quick is um, for reasons that we are still trying to iron out, uh, we haven't been able to cut a release for the guac visualizer um, but we fixed a few things and merged a pull request that adds some new functionality um, and the thing i wanted to show and this is not my work but i'm, I'm showing it because i'm here um, is this package information window is a new feature so as you select a package um, you know it comes up on the chart and then this one, actually, it should show some things, I think. But uh, again, this may be that the environment hasn't run all the certifiers yet. Um, but so, you know, this is one of the things where, you know, with the Guac Visualizer, um, you know, it's kind of neat to see the relationships, but then getting information about the packages as you're exploring you know, I had a conversation earlier today. It's like, you know, it's not necessarily useful for like serious production work, but it is really helpful for demos and for sort of like the, I'm not asking a specific question. I'm just kind of poking around because I don't know what to ask. Um, and so uh, Parth and I have been making various attempts to fix the build process because um, this has been, you know, the visualizer hasn't had a release in a while. Um, and so we are... Uh, 
fixing one issue and then discovering the next one that that crops up. Um, and I actually just before the meeting started opened a pull request that adds basically CI builds on pull requests um, so that hopefully we'll be able to do this without having to tag a bunch of releases that will never actually complete. Parth? Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was going to say the um, this feature is a little bit old. You know, we, I think we just try, try to revive it and merge it in. And probably the reason why it's not working is because we made some changes to the actual repo itself and then the, the API around it. So that might be the reason why it's not showing any S bombs or vulnerabilities and such. So yeah. I suspect that's the reason. I say it was working it was working when I tested it the other day, but I literally like just restarted my guac demo cluster um right before we started. So, you know, there might be things that either, you know. I, I've noticed that you know running the local demos sometimes it um after a while you have to like force kill everything because you know it runs out of uh, file handles or something that's on the laptop and the you know if like if, if it's been left running for a long time it doesn't necessarily like that um because it's you know not really designed it's not the persistent environment so um yeah yeah um yeah, you know, the key value in the demo environment are not meant to be, you know, stay up perpetually. Uh, the Postgres yes. with the collect subscriber, all the other kind of architecture is the the proper one to use for <laughs> for production mm -hmm. or any kind of any kind of long term yeah. use case. Yeah. So I'll definitely um before we do the CNCF live session, uh, the cloud native live session on Tuesday, I'll definitely make sure the demo environments are working as um, as bad as you know, as, as unpleasant it is for me to sit here and have the demos not actually work. Uh, the Quack community meeting um, doing on the cloud native live would be a lot more unpleasant. So <laughs> uh, I, I do appreciate uh, everyone's patience with the underwhelming displays here. But uh, any other questions on those demos? I promise you, they all have worked at some point or another. We believe you. <laughs> Would I lie? Possibly, but not about this. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, yep. uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, uh, from from our from from me, I think there's no demos. I think we we've been doing a uh, incremental releases uh, more often now, just so that we can push out more changes, any kind of bug fixes, all that kind of stuff, quicker and quicker. So. Uh, you might have seen two releases actually come out today. Um, so I think the goal is to just, you know, keep pushing out uh, fixes, improvements, all those kind of things. And uh, it's mostly been mostly mostly fixes and improvements on so far. So nothing really to demo. I think the, the clearly defined one was the biggest piece that we added. Uh, we made it quicker, you know, we did batch, batch processing, all the other kind of stuff. So but the same, same type of thing, but it's, you know, a lot faster than it was before. So. Yeah, um, and when Parth talks about uh, getting those incremental releases out quickly, uh, zero point eight point five's blog post hadn't even been published when zero point eight point six was released. Um, so we are we can push those out pretty quickly. Uh, expect a blog post later today on that, um, and definitely you know follow the Guac blog uh, for all the release announcements and other information. Um, so the next thing that was on the agenda was Hacktoberfest participation, and I didn't add the link, so I will do that now in the doc. Um, but I had proposed initially to just have the Guac Docs uh, participate in Hacktoberfest um, in converse in the maintainers meeting on Monday. We didn't have quorum, um, but we thought maybe adding Guac Visualizer would be a good one as well because that's an area where it'd be helpful to have some, you know, newcomer help. Um, you know, we don't necessarily want, um, you know, the, one of the downsides to Hacktoberfest is sometimes it attracts spammy contributions. And so, you know, the main project might not be ideal for that. Um, nobody's objected to that. So I'm just going to kind of assume at this point that sure, everyone's fine with it and uh, work on a blog post and make sure those get tagged appropriately. Um, and we'll see what kind of uh, interest we can attract. Um, 
you know, it, it does feel a little bit like Hacktoberfest is not quite as popular as it used to be, maybe because they're not giving away t-shirts anymore. Um, but, you know, that could be a good way to, you know, attract people to the community and, you know, either as, you know, one-time contributions, which are great, or maybe they'll, you know, they'll like us and they'll stick around a little bit, which would be even better. So any, uh, any other questions or comments on that? I think that sounds good. Um, how, how would we, um, I'm not too familiar with Pactoberfest. Um, what will we have to do to make it easier for folks to, to engage in that? So the main thing we need to do is to tag or well, it's not tag. Um, add the Hacktoberfest topic to those two repos, okay. uh, and then it'll show up in the the search that GitHub uses. Um, and then you know I've committed, um, and I think Mihai also volunteered to you know keep a close eye on pull requests and work with um, you know anyone who comes along to make sure that the you know provide timely reviews and things like that. All right. Well, that is the end of the uh, prepared topics for this month. Does uh, anyone else, we have plenty of time if somebody has other things on their mind, or if not, we can call this a shorter meeting. I, I have one question. Um, and maybe this is, this may be for um, Marco or is he? <laughs> um, I know we talked a little bit about like the REST interface uh, and then you mentioned that um, one of the things that you all were doing it was querying the database, the end database um, SQL directly. Um, is that like a pattern that you found like is, are, is writing the SQL for that easy for what you wanted to do? So uh, basically what we did the, back in the past, we already shared was to create uh, uh, some new GraphQL endpoints for the kind of famous at this point, I would say free use cases we, we had and still have in, uh, in, our, in our project. Uh, an ongoing task, which I am leading right now Sorry, before saying this, all that stuff was based on a 0 0.3 version. Uh, and now we wanted to try to keep and maintain it with the version of Quack, right? So we had to fix many other things. And now we are, as a priority, arrived to, 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 to Quack. And, and I can just say that it's totally true what Bart said that the, the, the release cadence has improved because I started working on the 072 and now I found myself having almost done, but we are at 086, which is not a big change, just like from 0 0.3 to 0 0.7, where the data model has changed all the packages, uh, you know, uh, all the pools management, the tables, uh, the SBOMs included, the dependency packages, and so on. So basically, I have been adapting all that stuff. Uh, obviously, our goal is to contribute back, in, in fact, from time to time when I spot an issue in SPDX, SBOM, parsing, and so on and so forth, I keep pushing upstream as soon as possible. First, because this community is a great one and the feedback is always welcome in terms of also being me sure that uh, what I consider an issue is really an issue, right? Uh, especially versus specification and so on and so forth. Otherwise, it's just me saying that I am right, which is not a very good approach when, when you know, dealing with software in the end. Regarding the queries, basically, I rewrote all the queries uh, I wrote in the past uh, to be uh, 
to fit with the new data model, right? And that's that's the, the bulk of the work uh, we have been doing. And again, the idea is to be able to commit back uh, just to have a feedback uh, so that we are kind of kind of right. Uh, I know the idea was also on rest and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of stuff going on uh, on our side because we are trying to make the the product, our product more reliable and updating WAC is obviously one of the key steps uh, to keep the product reliable, right? Uh, to keep the pace uh, and try to reach, uh, you know, uh, trying to reach WAC version one as soon as it will be available with the closest technical depth, basically. That's that's the plan uh, we, we have in place. For example, we have, uh, we have been working a lot also with S3 external components. So for example, credential management, also TLS management for secure in the endpoints. It's all stuff that I am porting uh, and as soon as they work, I will start pushing upstream also these uh, Kind of small, but you know, it's kind of production strength changes, right? If you want to expose something, it should always be with uh, uh, with TLS enabled or available, right? And the yes, free credential management and so on and so forth. So, uh, Guac works anyway, but with this stuff, maybe it's more production ready and something like that. So that's our plan, and also the queries. So there's a lot of stuff going on for sure with the new data models. The queries are easier and better. Uh, I didn't extensively test them yet, but for traversing the package to, let's say, to SBOM, I, I managed to have also a, let's say, native SQL recursive query, which ensures great performances because basically you defer to PostgreSQL the problem of optimizing the recursion, right? It's proper as SQL, you know, com fully compatible, and no, no, nothing hard-coded, uh, but, but then I'm still working to have it running once, so I'm celebrating before having <laughs> before having one, so okay, it's also recorded. Yeah, uh, that's uh, well, well, that's the goal, let's say, uh, I mean, uh, the recursive query to work. So that's basically where we are also with query. So working a lot on, on this with always the idea of, of pushing back as soon as possible, both on the, let's say, on the pure data management side and also on these kind of, you know, production ready futures that uh, we had the to implement and, and we want to share because we, we do believe it's a common uh, it's a kind of common problem to solve. For example, enabling TLS everywhere, right? You, you, yeah. you want to go to production without TLS. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I'm super curious whenever you, you, you have something that's shareable for the query, um, because I, I know um, MD has like had created the option to uh for the rest api to kind of do direct queries and i'm kind of curious like oh is that a possible path then that, that we can take for some maybe some of these queries are easier to write in sql or maybe not <laughs> and so, well, yeah. The, the, yeah no the, the good news is that and supported everything i had to do so um, and again, it's standard SQL, but it doesn't mean that every framework supports having, you know, the recursive uh, capabilities and so on and so forth, right? Because there's in kind of, you know, SQL frameworks, no, there's no SQL cont compatibility test, right? So maybe some features are not available and you have to go to, to hard code your query. The good news is that Ant has been supporting uh, everything and working as expected at this point so that's uh, that's yet another plus one on end uh, which wasn't a decision that basically nobody in this meeting took uh, but but you know uh, still credits to Ivan uh, that did really a, maybe not the best but a good choice for sure and I'm happy to have said this. That's recorded, and I, I'm not so sure he will see. But but you know that's 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 important in the end in a community meeting. You know to give credits also to initial contributors, even if not in the meeting anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, anything else? All right, well, I'll just close as usual with the reminders of the upcoming events. Um, and, you know, see the OpenSSF calendar to get the meeting details. Um, but the next weekly maintainer meeting, which happens on Mondays, is of course on Monday. Um, on Tuesday, we'll be doing a Cloud Native Live where I'll show successful versions of the demos I intended to show today. Um, and Parth will also have a demo, as will Soham from Purdue. Um, so that'll be part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's uh, live stream event. There is a post on the Guac blog about that, um, so you can tune in live on YouTube or catch the recording later. Um, the next Guac time office hours, which we have uh, every fortnight, um, is just an open, unscheduled, like un, uh, unagended meeting to talk about whatever. Um, that will be next Friday, the 27th of September. And then, of course, the next monthly community meeting will be Thursday, the 17th of October. Uh, so I hope to see you all then. And until then, we'll catch you uh, on Slack or on the mailing lists and around the community. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.